stress, anxiety, irritability and restlessness are the vibrations of majority humans today. Tirelessly consuming information, be it video or audio based, has become a trait from mere habit. It is an indispensable part of urban lifestyle today. Calmness is distant from our attitude and absent in our vocabulary also. If we move from a micro to a macro vision, we'll see how our earth is also gasping for breath and is not at peace. The planet which is predominantly blue and green in color is being stripped off gradually from its shades and its vibrance. Forests are chopped off either for agriculture or construction of buildings, residentials, offices, factories, tourist resorts, etc. Man chose money over his own well-being, a foolish act that pushed him away from nature. A river like Ganga is the dumping ground for our waste and we continue to pollute water bodies without realizing that all of this is coming back to us in the form of cancer and other diseases eventually and already we detach ourselves from nature again more for short-term gains another foolish act air was not left clean either the unending number of flights for human convenience firecrackers for human enjoyment are proofs of that another of the many foolish acts which isolated us from mother nature Besides land, air and water, man explores the hazardous decibels nowadays a lot, which brings us to another dangerous form of pollution, which is noise or noise pollution. Seeing the state most of us have reached, complete silence would have been the ideal medicine. But withdrawal symptoms may show up for the ones who depend on something or the other. Some or the other kind of engagement basically to live an exciting life. In that case, we can expose ourselves to sounds which are healing. They will tune us entirely with the original frequencies of the universe. Probably this is how you might pave your way to comfortable silences, health and everlasting happiness. Growing distances between nature and homo sapiens is the root cause of all the unrest, internal and external. Shortening this can be our first step towards this goal. Usages of music as a powerful tool to live a fuller life is what this chapter dwells upon. It is a natural drug, we all know that, which can give you a high without harming you. Humans are imaginative creatures. They just love to fantasize. Atheists, people who simply don't believe in this concept of God, will probably say that God is a manifestation or a product of human imagination. And they do make sense, right? But for myself, I can say that I am hovering somewhere in between these two extremely distant poles, and hence I cannot label myself as either a blind believer or a complete atheist also. I'm still figuring things out. But growing up in a Hindu family, which is not orthodox also, but reasonably conservative and extremely respectful of rituals and traditions. There are certain belief systems which are ingrained in me and I cannot really let go of them. And I honestly do not want to because they are beautiful. Logic hits with age and education. And I think a questioning mind is something to encourage as it is an identity, a trait of productive youth. But there are cons of a questioning mind too. Because it never lets you be at peace. Doesn't let you have simple faith in things. By having faith, I do not always mean God or a higher power. You can take for example something as basic as 
having faith in the power of sleep, having simple faith unquestioningly, frees us, allowing a sense of surrender to seep in, which is extremely important sometimes. Greater the expectation of results, lesser doubts we should have in our minds. So the importance of faith becomes very clear as it drives our belief in God. And it's not the other way around. God doesn't drive our beliefs. But it is because we believe in a higher power. We think a higher power does exist. So it amounts to faith is equal to God and no faith is equal to no God. As simple as that. Faith also, simple faith also helps ease tension from our shoulders as we tend to let go when we pray. Tilting from east to west, here we come to monophonic sounds which are what the sacred music in the ancient times used to be. Monophonic sound is a simple melody sung by one singer without any harmony or chords alongside. Technically speaking, our minds become more still and focused when an experience, be it visual or an audio stimulus, is singular in nature. This can be a lullaby, a prayer song, a hymn, voiced by one singer, unaccompanied by anything else. Gregorian chants are super calming, though they are not always monophonic and can be presented in unison also. Since unison came into light, I have to say that singing along with others can nurture and strengthen the feeling of togetherness. If the same melody is sung by many singers simultaneously in sync, it does create unity and discipline. Dhanno dhanno habali tare Dhanno dhanno habali tare Bidhe chhe amono ghar Bidhe chhe amono ghar Shunne rupur posta kore Dhanno dhanno habali tare When different melodic lines are sung at the same time for the purpose of harmonization, it gives me a feeling that diversity can also exist with peace and thereby the name harmony. An example is choir. <laughs> The same vibrations created by the performers reaches the audiences also. That is why it is essential for artists to check on themselves and their mental states before hitting the stage. Performing musicians are public influencers after all and hence have a great deal of responsibility. Let's come to frequencies now. This is being researched by scientists and experts in medicine since a while now and the results are very promising. Patients respond to Om Chant recordings positively, resulting in the growing reliance and confidence of doctors in music therapy. One of the early life incidents is testimony to the fact that music has healing properties if the right frequencies are touched. Let's all time travel and go back in 2009. Where was I? If I talk about myself, then I am a freshly out voice in the business in 2009, thanks to television. And also, my newly born fan base was giving me celebrity treatment wherever I went and interacted with them. A part of it also recorded my songs, extracted the audio from it, some of them also uploaded my video performances on YouTube. I was learning YouTube 
during that period as a child and also some of them were unapologetically biased about me i was enjoying all kinds of attention one such family who fell in love with my voice during that period after the show happened stayed in finland they were based there after the show they contacted my mother and expressed their admiration for me they had a beautiful young son and life was perfect for them it was flowing like a fairy tale till the moment their little child was diagnosed with an incurable disease it made him be in pain mostly a time came when he was in excruciating pain unbearable pain 24/7 and his parents exposed him to my voice to my music it used to provide him some relief temporarily a phase came when he wanted to hear me 24/7 and they used to play my music all the time to him he didn't unfortunately make it ultimately the ailing child he left his parents he left this world but what consoled his parents the young couple was that a voice of a young girl in another part of the world is healing is providing some at least some mental healing to their child unknowingly the credit goes to music that is the power of music it gave him some relief in the final months in this world real life experiences can definitely make our beliefs in facts and figures we previously know and are aware of already firm and stronger like this family i just spoke about who live in finland when reality hit them hard unpredictability of life hit them hard unfortunately they started using music therapy and initially they were unaware but later on they started deriving the benefits of it imagine a person who has mi or musical intelligence already which is a concept already discussed in chapter 9 that person will automatically for his own good choose the nature friendly frequencies and sounds 7 is a repetitive number in nature think about it seven colors in a rainbow seven chakras which are said to be the energy centers in our bodies seven wonders of the world seven notes or sat sur in music and seven beneficial frequencies two in this list have a deep connection with each other a quick net search will give you a list showing exposure to which frequency opens up which chakra let's go through this chart frequencies are measured in hertz 396 releases fear 417 initiates change 528 healing and dna repair 639 heals bonds and relationships 741 is said to boost creativity 852 is related to self actualization and spiritual homecoming 963 hertz is said to raise positive energy and is connected to intuition if you initiate further study you'll automatically find out the cons too as i did i found out that 7 hertz which is the frequency of our body organs is considered harmful for us i'm just planting the seed in you further exploration is up to you coming from vocals to instruments i have personally benefited a lot from listening to solo playing of classical instruments both melody and rhythm classical compositions can improve concentration drastically and should be a must hear for students if you want to break the monotony symphony by the legendary composers like mozart vivaldi beethoven are all tempting options and how parallel melodies 
playing beside the main composition without creating chaos enhance the one at the forefront can be heard in these compositions in this context the instruments the ones carved out of nature can be a part of your playlist if you want to feel really rooted for example the indian flute bansuri which came from bamboo trees one example of a rhythm instrument is ghatam though it is made differently but is of the shape of a pot one of the ancient percussions of india it is if calming the nerves is your goal harp can also be a beautiful option the positive effects of classical music on the brain beat western or indian are proven scientifically also the former to me is more collaborative while the latter is soloistic sometimes of late i also came across some articles on raga healing which contained lists of rags and their effects this is another subject altogether for example ahir bhara lower blood pressure todi is good if one is having cold whereas bageshri is said to be effective in diabetes as it arouses a feeling of stability depth and calmness as stated by what i read without disrespecting the researcher i want to say or add rather one thing that effects of rags can be very subjective ahir bhero is many a times the rag for my morning riyas singing the same set of notes they created ecstasy one day it brought tears another day the idea is not to escape the dark emotions but to live each one deeply which indian classical music has allowed me to a lot of what is received by the mind affects the body immediately and this is an automated regulation that we cannot help till now all the above discussed stimuli were of such nature that they can be consumed externally but now i'm going to introduce you to an idea or a practice whatever you may want to call it the seed of which was born out of me so one day i was simply sitting idle by choice though happily and i playfully started exploring the intrinsic rhythm or music inside my body by feeling my pulse rate deep down inside while doing it i thought why do we use these metronome apps even for the trivial things for accuracy of course we sometimes need it but otherwise i think the app the real one is installed inside our bodies so a fun experiment began after that and i just to check if it works i checked my pulse rate on the oximeter and it was 86 before i started and then i then i started feeling my pulse rate i kept feeling it concentrated more in silences though because you need complete silences to enjoy this practice and then i randomly started humming some phrases right right now sare sani the current speed is 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 swift movement of notes are not restricted but i would suggest if you want to achieve a meditative state in that case i think long notes or even cycles of om would be very very effective according to me the speed i kept varying it depending on my heart rate any frequency will do as this experiment cannot be confined solely to musicians with fluctuating tempo of my heartbeats i also kept varying the tempo of my phrases 
Approximately after three minutes that day, I stopped. My pulse rate had dropped to 76, I checked. The margin changes and I saw it happening during other times also. But every time I tried it, my heart rate slowed down within a few minutes. Wanderlust is great, but our racing minds, there are cons to it. The restless minds we have these days have a habit which takes a toll on our overall well-being. What I just shared is a form of meditation which is so simple to practice because we are using the music that exists within here and nothing else. The chain of thoughts stops immediately after you start as you are given a specific object to focus on. I wouldn't have known that lowering the speed of thoughts can be so easy with such a simple exercise. It was great fun. I enjoyed journeying with all of you. But honestly, I would like to keep an open end to this book so that there is room for addition and alteration. Because I feel this is simply music is a yogic drug from my window. How about you sharing yours someday. I'd like that. And it will happen soon. Trust me. This drug which gives you a high and also roots you back to the ground where you belong at the same time. Isn't it magical? And the best part is you don't even need to be an artist, a musician to feel, to experience its magic. Music can also act as a smooth bridge from noise to silences, which was the aim of this chapter, last chapter of the book. It can be your source of happiness. It can also be sometimes your secret escape when you probably feel overwhelmed sometimes by worldly things. And finally, certain things should be left unexpressed for you to find out. And hence, I'm leaving you, allowing you some privacy on your date with the yogic drug.